Hello and welcome to honors function. In this lecture, we're going to be covering the properties of logarithm. In the previous lecture, in lecture 55, we looked at the properties of logarithm from a graphical approach. These properties were all derived from the property of exponential, which makes sense because logarithm is the inverse function of exponential. In this lecture, we're not going to be looking at the graphical property of logarithm. We're going to be looking at the algebraic property of logarithm. Let's begin. So recall that the exponential base a function is defined from r into 0 infinity. It is a one-to-one -one function, therefore it has an inverse, and by definition the name of the inverse is log base a. So log base a is defined from 0 infinity to r. The most important property of an exponential function is that it transforms a sum x1 plus x2 into a product. This is x base a of x1 times x base a of x2. Okay? It transforms a sum, sum in the input, product in the output. This is something you can see easily by writing the definition of an exponential. And it's just the old formula that you should be very familiar with that we've also extended to real numbers. a to the power of x1 plus x2 equals a to the power of x1 times a to the power of x2. So what happens to this property when you look at the log, when you look at the inverse function? I'm going to show you that right now. Let's call a to the power of x1, let's call it y1, and a to the power of x2, let's call it y2. So the formula above becomes a to the power of x1 plus x2 is equal to y1 times y2. Okay, so far so good. Now, I'm going to write the logarithmic form of all the exponential form I have here. So the first exponential form is right here. So how do you write the log form of it? So it's a log base a of y1 times y2 equals x1 plus x2. Okay, that's the first one. What about the other one? Well, the other one is like, what is, I'm sorry, I meant y2 right here, of course, okay? What is y1? y1 is exponential base a of x1. Therefore, log base a of y1 equals x1. And the other formula right here, y2 is the exponential base a of x2. Therefore, log base a of y2 is equal to x2. Okay, so now replace this x1 and this x2 in this formula, and you get that log base a of y1 times y2 is equal to, so it's equal to log base a of y1 plus, that's a plus right here, log base a of y2. That's it. What do you have? You have shown that the log function transform a product in the input into a sum in the output. Again, that is not surprising because the output of the log is the input of the exponential, right? Input of exp. And so this is a transformation of a sum into a product, okay? And the input of the log is the output of exp. Output of exp, okay? So it really makes sense when you go from input to output, either from log or exponential, that um, if with one function you transform a sum into a product, then with the other function, which goes the other way around, you're going to transform a product into a sum. Okay? From this property, we derived three other properties. Let me show them to you from my notes. So this is the first property we just proved. I am not going to prove the other three, but please check all the proofs. They are pretty straightforward. The first one was the most important. The other one are all 
fairly easily derive from the first one, okay? This one is an important one. Um, remember that if inside a log you have an exponential with the same base as the log, then the exponential function and the log base A cancel each other and you have x. Well, this is telling us what happens when you don't have the same base inside, okay? So you take the power and you put it in front, right here. Property number three, it's derived from the second one right here. You take r equals to negative one, and that's it. It's pretty straightforward. And property number four, property number four, again, derived from the first one and the number three right here. If you take one and three, you can show four. So four tells you that a log transform a ratio into a subtraction. Now, you got to be careful with this one right here. It's a very common mistake to see students doing this. They have log base A of X minus log base A of Y, okay? So this is the right side of this formula. And they say it will be equal to the log base A of X over the log base A of Y. And this is really not true, okay? A sum is not equal to a ratio, no. But the difference of log is equal to the log of a ratio, not the ratio of log. This is a ratio of logs, ratio of logs, while this is the log of a ratio, okay, log of ratio, and that's completely different ratio. Okay, let's go over some examples now. Example number one, you have to turn this sum into a single log. Now, a single log means that in the end, you only have to write log base A of something. That's all I want to see. I don't want to see a number in front. I don't want to see divided by a number or don't add or subtract something, okay? No, 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 just log base A of something. Everything has to go inside the log base A. So how do you do that? Well, this one right here, you have to write it as a log. Now, you remember, what is the range of log? The domain is zero infinity and the range is all real number for any base, right? That means that any real number, any real number can be written as a log in any base. So how do you write one in log base A? Well, that's pretty simple. One is a log base A of A, right? Log base A of A is one plus log base A of X. And so finally, this is equal to log base A of A times X, okay? The sum of logs is equal to the log of a product. Here we go, that's the first one. Second one, we gotta do the same thing. We want a single log. So this time the base is five. How do you write three in base five log? Again, Pretty simple. It's a log base five of five cubed, right? These two will cancel each other and that's equal to three minus, now what are you gonna do with this division? Well, divided by two is the same as multiplying by one half, right? Minus one half times log base five of X. So one more line and we're ready to write a single log. This is the log base five of five cubed. Well, I guess I should write 125 right here, right? 125. Minus, now what are you going to do with the one half? You bring it at the exponent right here, right? X to the one half. So log base five of X to the one half, which means root of X right here. And now what do you do with this subtraction? Well, the difference of log is the log of a ratio of 125 divided by root X. That's it. So you're going to do number three. But before that, let me give you some indication how it goes. Here's a quick recipe for these adding and subtracting log. Let's take, uh, I'm going to take ln, okay, because I don't want to write log base A. It works for any log. Let me take A ln U plus B ln V minus C ln X minus D ln y, last one, plus e, ln, z. Okay, I'm going to write that in a single log in one line, 
all right so pay attention i'm going to write a single log right here there will be something at the numerator why because this is every plus will go at the numerator and every minus will go at the denominator so we have a fraction and everything in front of a log will turn into a power inside right it's going to turn into a power so what do we have we have u to the power of a it goes to the top because i have a plus in front what else times uh, a sum becomes a product right times b v to the power of b and times z to the power of e that's it for the numerator now let's take care of our denominators we have x to the power of c times y to the power of d okay this is a very nice short cut um, it works all the time you can easily show it from the property we just covered okay uh, you take the property we covered and you just apply them several time and you can easily show this it's not difficult all right okay so please do example number three let me continue with some more examples now we're doing the opposite we're going to expand a log it's written as a single log and now i want to expand them so the first thing i have to do right here is take my three out so this is three times log base five of x divided by 25. so it is now it's pretty easy this is a log of a ratio so it's going to be the difference of log so it is three times okay so we have log base five of x minus log base 5 of 25 log base 5 of 25 25 is 5 squared right so log base 5 on 25 is just 2 so this is 3 log base 5 of x we said this is 2 so it's minus 6 that's it that's how i expand it i'm gonna do 5 and you're gonna do 6 5 this is the fourth root, so it's power 1, 4, therefore the power will come out, right? What's inside right here? x cubed, y, e2, z5. This is all power 1 half, sorry, 1 fourth, and the power will come out. Okay, so it's 1 fourth times what? ln of x cubed times y over e2 times z5. So I'm going to expand that right away, and I have one fourth of, so that's three ln x right here, right? Plus, so let me open a parenthesis here, plus ln y, minus ln of e squared, that's just gonna be two, ln of e squared, that's just two, and then finally minus, it's at the denominator, right? Minus five ln z. So last thing is to expand the one fourth right here, distribute. So we have three fourth ln x plus one fourth ln y. This is two, we said, right? That's two. So minus two fourths, so that's minus one half, minus one half, and then minus five fourth ln z. That's it. Okay, not too difficult. Please do number six. Now be careful for this one. It's a base one half, okay? All right, let me continue with more examples. Here we go. Last series of example. This is pretty interesting. I'm giving you a value of a log, log base nine of five, and I'm telling you it's about 0.73. And I want you to approximate all these logs, okay? So the numbers you can play with are five, okay, all these numbers inside, five, 0.2, 45, what else, root 15, five all of these number inside you have to build them with five and nine okay now when i say nine i also mean for example nine to the one half right square root of nine that that's okay that's 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 a power okay uh, of nine so so that's good all right let, let's see what i mean by that the first one log base nine of 25 well that's pretty straightforward this is a log base nine of five squared so it is 2 times log base 9 of 5. So it's about 1.46. You just multiply this by 2. Got it. Log base 9 of 0.2. So log base 9 of 0.2, this is log base 9 of 
one fifth. Point two is one fifth. So it's the opposite of log base nine of five. So pretty simple. That's the opposite of point seven three. Okay. Next one. Log base nine of forty five. Well, forty five is what? This is log base nine of what is 45? It is 9 times 5, right? So this is a log of a product. So it's log base 9 of 9 plus log base 9 of 5. So what is log base 9 of 9? It's 1. Oh, I guess I should say about now. It's 1 plus 0.73. So it's about 1.73. Okay, I'll do one more because I'm having fun and I'll let you tackle the last two. Number 10 log base 9 of root 15. All right, so what is that? So how about we take the root outside? So it is 1 half, right? Root 15, this is 15 to the 1 half. I take it outside. It's 1 half times log base 9 of 15. So it is 1 half times log base 9 of 3. So it's 9 to the 1 half times 5, right? 15, 3 times 5, and 3 I wrote it as 9 to the 1 half, okay? So, what do we have here? We have 1 half times, okay, let's expand that, 1 half log base 9 of 9 plus log base 9 of 5, okay? So, log base 9 of 9, that's just 1. So, this is 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, and here I'm going to write about 1 fourth, Got to distribute right here, be careful. Plus 1 half times 0.73. And so it is 0.25 plus half of 0.73 is 0.365. And so the whole thing is about point so 0.156. Okay, I'll stop this video here. Thank you for watching.